people and tell them I can see God's miracles all over you and you may be seated. Yes. Welcome family. We are so thrilled to be here at the Wisdom Center for the last day of this conference. Oh no. Let's pray for time to go slower. <laughs> we are thrilled that you are a part and right now family Dr. Murdoch asked us to have Prophet Manton speak to our lives for 10 minutes. Dr. Murdoch is here already and he's re getting ready to come, but he really felt uh, that we should listen to Prophet Thomas Manton. I'm going to describe him as Dr. Murdoch does. He's been a friend. How many of you know that that's a big word? You can be an apostle, prophet, teacher, but man, when somebody like Dr. Murdoch calls you a friend, that's pretty big. And Prophet Manton is here with us. And one thing I love about this man of God is his sensitivity to others, to the Holy Spirit, and we are thankful to have him here. Prophet Manton, we love you, and we would like to welcome you with a warm hand clap today. Do you need us to help you with your device? Or you're okay? I'm, I'm good. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we stretch our hands up to the boss, the boss of the universe? Lord, we're so honored that, um, to be in your presence in your house on Resurrection Sunday. We thank God for your mighty apostle, Dr. Mike Murdoch, who's a champion. And you've used him around the world to bring revelation and revolution to so many people's lives, including my life. And we thank you for your favor, Holy Spirit. You've been touching me the last hour. I've had a visitation from the Lord, and I pray that same grace and fire come on everybody in this house. Lift your hands just for a minute. The presence of the Lord is here. There's something new happening. I've been writing a, uh, another book on the laws of success this week. I woke up very early in the morning yesterday, and I was dictating for about two hours, and I'm getting to share none of it. Because this morning, the Lord spoke to me. Oh, my God, I'm holding back tears. I, I broke into tears in the, in the boardroom a few moments ago. I, I, something happened to me. Lift your hands. I pray it happens to you. The mantle and the anointing. God can re-anoint you. God can, God can retune you, refine you, retool you, remake you, relaunch you, revisit you. This is revival. This is reformation in the life. And I want to say before I say anything else, you can be absolutely of no use to humanity without the power of God moving in your life, without the power of the Holy Spirit. And the more grace and anointing you have from heaven, the more you can become. It's not you, it's him. And the world doesn't need just uh, you, they need him. And I want to answer a question that you may have been asking, because I hear it in the spirit. A lot of people say, what about me? You know, what about my ministry, my life, my business, and whatever? And I just want to tell you, you need more of God. You need more of God. Lift your hands right now. Let's pray. Holy Spirit. I wish we could do that song, Anything You Want, but I don't have time now, but we'll do it another time. Anything you want, anything you ask, whatever you desire, just name the task. That's what I will do. That's what I will do. Precious Holy Spirit, I'm in love with you. 
Love on him right now, just for a minute. Pray in your prayer language. Vise brosta kanchile bat sikatona matea kisa le lebo shata. I pray people all over the world get touched with the fire of heaven on this resurrection day, a very holy day, a very powerful day. Why the devil knows the power of it in India and causing acts of, of hatred against Christianity. This is, this is the thing now that has to happen. God needs to raise up people. That could be warriors for him. In Jesus' name, amen. Wave your hand to the Lord one time. Just say, thank you, Lord, for the touch of heaven. I pray you be healed, delivered, set free. New things begin to happen from today. This has been a very powerful conference. And uh, the visitation of the Lord is here more than you know. Are you watching online, wherever you are in the world, I tell you, the Lord wants to touch you in great power. In Jesus' name, I declare it's happening in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to speak on the subject of servanthood. Are you ready? I tell you, this, this was not in my notes, but the Lord gave it to me. I'm reminded of Joshua, the son of Nun, and I don't have my notes and everything here. I'm just going to free flow. Is that okay? All right. Well, it has to be. Joshua, the son of Nun, was the son of Nun, N-U-N, but we could also say N-O-N-E, the son of Nun. Hello? Remember, Abram was the son of Terah from the Ur of Chaldees, idol worshipers, but he sought God to become the friend of God, and something new began to happen by his connection and touch with heaven. But also... Joshua was called to be Moses' servant, and you would have never heard about him, but God took the man who was the servant, who was patient, and raised him up to be the mighty warrior and the leader of the children of Israel into the next day. Elijah needed someone, and he found Elisha. And the Lord said, this is the one. And he poured water on the hands of Elijah, traveled around, and even when Elijah said to him, don't come with me to the next place. Stay over here. He said, my father, my father, in 2 Kings chapter 2, my father, my father, as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave your side. And look what became of him. And when Elijah was being taken up, Elisha asked him for the hard thing, the Bible said, the double portion. And 32 notable miracles were noted through the life of Elisha compared to the 16 of Elijah. Many people don't want to serve. You heard Dr. Murdoch refer to me. I'm amazed, you know, because you know, so many years go by and you forget about these things. I've traveled all over the world. My feet, well, these are new shoes, blessed. Is it okay? These are brand new. I just put them on yesterday for the first time. I like new stuff. Praise the Lord, somebody. You can clap if you want. It's all right. I pray God gives you 20 pairs of new shoes too. In Jesus' name, he'll bless it. he blesses his own servants, you know. I've been on all six continents of the world, 32 nations now. My last nation was um, uh, in Africa, and many other countries were going to. So you travel so many miles, you know, seven figures of miles, and you forget about some things. But Dr. Murdoch was referring back to when he first met me, listen to this, in December of 1990. Is that a few weeks ago? <laughs> that was a few weeks ago, yeah? A few super moons, blood moons, red moons, pink moons, and blue moons ago, yeah? And, uh, <laughs> and he saw me. I was serving a great, very famous man of God, very profound man of God, and I was working his book table. Dr. Murdoch came over stood in front of the table and stared into my eyes. You know how he can do that? With the most intense gaze. And I started to feel a little bit uncomfortable as he was like, whoa, I felt the power of God. I said, something's happening here. And he locked into me and he looked at me and he's like, what's your name? And he said, I see you. And he started saying a few things, you know? And it's just like we just got connected. And he refers back to that because that's a, a, a reference point, a starting point. Maybe I needed to be reminded of that again. 
Some people, don't, they want to lead, but they don't want to serve. And you've heard Dr. Murdoch bring the story from the Bible about Rebecca, how she was asked to water the camels, and then she became the wife. And now she owned the things in the whole house. Someone lift your hands. Praise the Lord. You, sometimes there are things that are a test that will later become your testimony. And if you don't want to go through that, you can go through a mess. It can become your message. You can go through a trial. It can become your triumph. You could go through like a, 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 a reviling situation and that will become something that God can use in you to make you a revelator to mankind, to humanity. I wonder today how much people want to actually pay the price of servanthood. Write the word down, servanthood. Write the word down, I am a servant. This is fresh from heaven. This is the Holy Ghost. I was going to teach on the laws of success. And you wait that my new books are coming. I was talking with Dr. Burdock and showing him some of the new covers. He loved some of them, and it was just, I said, I'm writing so many. He says, well, don't try to write too many, but I'm, I'm, uh, I feel it. I feel it. I want to. And, uh, but I, I'm going to make a book out of this. Here we go. This is a visitation from heaven I'm having on Resurrection Day. Resurrection Day is noted as the victory day, but Jesus became the servant of mankind to redeem them, even to go to the cross the worst form of humiliation and horror that any person could ever know about or even experience. And he was the one that is now the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He was before, but he humbled himself. My father was a great uh, uh, world political leader, uh, here in America, I think sometimes I feel like in my spirit, I'm still overseas somewhere telling the testimony. I am in America, right? Praise the Lord. I'm a bit in the spirit, but I mean, I'm, a, I'm looking around. I'm in, the, I'm in America. Yes, here in America. And I was supposed to take over his legacy. And all of his protégés are now multimillionaires. All of them, every one of them. But I am too. And I'm saved. I don't know if they're saved. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I haven't told Dr. Murdoch yet that I am one of the millionaires, but uh, because the Lord's given me, well, I, can, I don't know if I should say all the details, a lot. And more is in the making right now, and I'm going to be visiting him soon with uh, some treasure. Lift your hands, everybody. Say, praise the Lord. You know, the servant uh, becomes the, the, the leader in the house. Uh, after a while, you serve and God can then raise you up. But the test for leadership is first servanthood. And I, I had a visitation from the Lord. Got saved. But then here's the thing. I brought the gospel to my family and they all got saved. Now my great father is in heaven. My mom is in heaven. Someone say praise the Lord. His parents are in heaven and all the rest of the relatives. are. I brought the gospel to them and they've received the Lord. My little sister, my little niece, who's now uh, an attorney, and she married an NHL hockey star. And uh, all of this thing is reverberating in the bloodline, and we never knew of anybody born again on either side of the family. In my, in my households, back as far as you can go. You know why? We know that to be true also is because when someone gets born again in the midst of a people that's not born again, how many know they're the crazy one? Now they're preaching to everybody. So there's no way you can't be found out. You're not going to keep it to yourself. And everybody's going to go, what happened to you? Why are you telling me about the Bible and all that? I mean, you, you're going to say something, right? And if that has never happened in a bloodline and God chooses someone to now bring it, to touch them and bring it to them, it's a very, very awesome thing. Three weeks after my father died, the Lord spoke to me. And said, he said, Thomas, uh, your father is really enjoying heaven. Please give the Lord some praise. I was like, whoo, how many know that'll, that'll hit you real hard? It, may, it doesn't just make your day or your month, it makes your life. And the Lord told me also my mom, but I was in Africa, 
right at the very end of her life. He waited a while to tell me. He said, your mom really cried out to me again at the end of her life. She's also, with, 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 she's also up there. Praise the Lord. And my grandparents and everybody else. So the power of the gospel needs to come out. But I want to tell you a little admonition and a charge here. A lot of people want so much, but they want to give so little. They want to do so little. I'm on a sewing spree now. I came up to give 8500 I come up to give 1000 and 1000 and 1000 And I was putting that in Dr. Murdoch's hands up. And the harvest is really coming. The, the harvest is really coming. I mean, you know, nothing happens by accident. So if you want to be great, why don't you take and vote yourself in to become the least and to serve? Lift your hands. I know that's like a little bit dangerous there. So, you know, we want to be preached to about how great we are. We all go, how? And I, there's a time for that. I'm into that. I'm into success. I'm into teaching about success and prosperity. I'm into it. But there's a time when you need to humble yourself. Let's lift our hands and pray. I, I, I'm not going to be able to finish this. I'm just opening the bottle here. These few moments. Can someone come and play? But Can you play something behind me, dear? Do you know anything you want? Can you do anything you want? I'd love to hear it. Anything you want. Anything you ask. Whatever you desire. Just name the task. And that's what I will do. That's what I will do. Oh, precious Holy Spirit, I'm so in love with you. Let's all sing it together as a choir. Anything you want, anything you ask, whatever it is you desire, just name the task. And that's what I will do. That's what I will do. Precious Holy Spirit, I'm so in love with you. Just pray in the spirit for a minute. I tell you, I feel the presence of the Lord touching. There are Timothys. There are Elishas. There are Joshuas. There are uh, roots, you know, under Naomi. There are Esthers that were trained by the Chamberlains to get ready for the king. God has you in the making. Don't be afraid of the process to become a servant. Never be afraid of it. Never be afraid of it. Because if you can't humble yourself, how can you then come to, to rule a house? Jesus even said, if you are not faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you your own? And by him asking that question, he was basically saying, not me. Not me. You can try to figure it out yourself. I remember Dr. Murdoch was saying he got so busy and he wanted to do a couple of other things. And the whole, he said, I have so much to do. And the Holy Spirit said to him, uh, you want to try to do all that without my help? Have on, help yourself. And he, he, I know he thought, oh God, yes. Let me come back into the secret place again and take more time with you. Because without him, you can, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Remember that. I tell you. What do we do now? Can we stand up and take a stretch? I'm done for the moment. Stand up, take a stretch. Lift your hands and wave your hands to the Lord. How many thank God for Pastor Anna Sweet? She is sweet. What a wonderful woman of God. Her and her husband, Arturo, all the staff here. I commend you. You're the greatest servants. This is the house of excellence. Pastor Tim, you know, you've been in a lot of churches. You don't see this like kind of thing. Everybody's full of love. Everybody's full of zeal and excitement. Brother Carlos, in the back, I saw him again. He's so precious. He's always like, yes, I want to help. Whatever. What do you need? With zeal and passion, like Solomon's temple, happy 
are the servants of the house. Lift your hands. That's, that's the way God wants it. You have a ministry. You have a calling. You have a business. You have a, a multi-million dollar experience coming. Serve where you are right now. Plug in deeper. Tap into the grace that's in this ministry all over the world. I wanted to say this. I, I'm reminded of something very quickly. I want to say this in five seconds. Receive the touch, that's a, the mantle that's upon Dr. Mike Murdoch. Tap into it. Write the ministry. Sow a seed. Plant into this anointing. You will reap from it in great power. There's something great here that a lot of people watch, a lot of people see, and they go, I, I've heard of him. And, but no, you got to tap into the mantle. I've done that. I'm doing that more. And I'm having a visitation from the Lord on Resurrection Day. Let's give Jesus a, a mighty hand of praise because this is his day. I'm Thomas Manton the fourth. I love you. More later. More later. More later. I love you. Blow me a kiss. Some of you are so. Can I have one? Can we give Jesus one? King of Kings, Rose of Sharon, bright morning star, beginning and the end, first and the last, Alpha and Omega, soon and coming King, Bishop and Overseer of our souls bright and morning star, amen and faithful and true, everlasting father, prince of peace, mighty God, our savior and king. We love you today in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord some praise. Come on, lift it, 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 lift it for him. I pray you become the greatest servant. Make that your, your homework assignment now in Jesus' name. Dr. Murdoch, we thank God for your life. Love you. All right. Enjoy the rest of the day. Please give a hand clap to Prophet Manton. Can you lift a hand before the Lord and say, we are receivers. Say really loud, I am a receiver of the wisdom of God. I am a receiver of the anointing. I am a receiver of opportunities, ideas, instructions. I am a receiver of the millionaire status. I am a receiver in Jesus' name. And we all say amen. Turn to two or three people and tell them this is your day to become millionaire status. Those of you watching online, we are so thrilled that you are a part. We are ready to receive. We are thankful for you. And we are, we are aware of what God is about to do. We are sensitive, recognizing the moment. Amen. You may be seated, family. Well, anything you want, anything you ask, Whatever you desire, Lord, just name the task. That's what I will do. Oh, that's what I will do. Precious Holy Spirit, I'm in love with you. I'm in love. I'm in love. Ah, see that last line. I'm in love. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with you. I wrote that in my secret place, crying and crying and crying. That little piano there, went in there every morning, had the little altars around, little benches. And when Prophet Thomas Manton began to sing that song, my heart just leaped. You couldn't be more accurate in the necessary message, son. You couldn't be more accurate. Servanthood. 